Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's already time to update our top five best GPU picks. After a year long wait, I finally updated this series late last year, but in just a few short months, I've needed to make some changes thanks to the arrival of the GTX 1660 Ti and RTX 2060, though I've also made a few other changes and a few other price ranges. Anyway, as usual, we do have five categories covering numerous price ranges, so there will be something for everyone. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. First up, we have the best entry-level GPU, and a few months ago, I went with the Radeon RX 550 over the GeForce GT 1030. For those looking at spending no more than $80 US, I still highly recommend going with the RX 550. However, if you can increase the budget by just $25, you can now land the RX 560, and I strongly suggest this is the way you go. I suppose if you can. For starters, you get twice as much VRAM, and today the difference between two gigabytes and four gigabytes can be quite significant. So that alone really helps to justify the 30% price increase. The really big draw card here though is the fact that you're getting over 50% more performance. And in games such as Metro Exodus, that's the difference between unplayable and very playable performance at 1080p using medium quality settings. Then over on the green team, the cheapest GTX 1050 graphics cards, they start at $120, and again, they only come with a measly two gigabyte VRAM buffer, so I'd recommend avoiding those at all costs. Then the four gigabyte versions, they cost upwards of, I think it's about $150. Um, most are up around $180, which is absurd in my opinion, especially when you consider our next pick. Yes, our pick here is still the RX 570, which is selling for as low as $130 US, which is just amazing. Right now, both ASRock and PowerColor have $130 models on offer, and there are plenty of options selling between $140 and $150, which is still a really great price. Uh, for example, the ROG Strix version from ASUS, that can be had for $150 US. And remember, the RX 570 still comes with two free games, with your choice uh, currently from, I think it's Resident Evil 2, Devil May Cry 5, and The Division 2. So you can pick two of those games. Seems pretty good to me. Basically, it boils down to this. If you plan on getting any two of those games uh, over the next few months, you're virtually getting the graphics card for free. So that's a pretty amazing deal right there. Uh, of course, this pick could change next month as the GTX 1650 is rumored to become available at $180 US. But of course, we'll have to evaluate that product once it's released. Gamers looking to spend between $200 and $300 also have a few options to choose from. There's the GeForce GTX 1060 in either the 3GB or 6GB variant, the Radeon RX 580, and now the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. In terms of cost per frame, the RX 580 8GB is still the best value choice here, and it was my previous pick just a few months ago. However, the new GeForce GTX 1660 Ti is in a completely different class, I have to be honest. When it comes to performance, it delivers almost 30% more frames on average. It's also much more efficient and therefore will run cooler and quieter. So not bad given that it is much faster. For those reasons, I suggest spending the extra $80 to get the 1660 Ti. It's far more capable at 1440p, and for those seeking extreme frame rates at 1080p, it's also a much better option. So for under $300 US, I would go with the GTX 1660 Ti right now. In the last update, I explained how this category has traditionally targeted the sub $400 US price range. So that scrubbed the RTX 2070 from our list, uh, leaving us with just Vega 56 and the GTX 1070 Ti. Of those two options, I noted that it was, well, it was really a close battle, but overall, we could usually find the GTX 1070 Ti for a better price, and I suppose more crucially, get a better quality AIB model. Vega 64, in my opinion, is more of an opportunistic purchase, uh, find one on sale for a killer price and you're in business. But for the most part, the 1070 Ti was going uh, to present itself as the better value option. 
None of that really matters now though, as you should probably just get an RTX 2060. It's cheaper and it offers the same level of performance. In our 36 game benchmark, it edged out the 1070 Ti and it came in just behind Vega 64. It's also only about 10% slower on average when compared to the RTX 2070, but the 2070 costs 30% more making it, well, a completely pointless product in my opinion, just a few months after release. So unless you can get Vega 64 for under $400, I wouldn't bother with it. Uh, like I said, the RTX 2060 is very similar in terms of performance. It's also much more power efficient, runs cooler and quieter, and is available in a wide range of options, making it uh, the much better sub $400 choice in my opinion. That said, if you are willing to sacrifice a little bit of performance, the previously mentioned sub $300 King, the GTX 1660 Ti, is the best value option overall. Okay, so you could argue about the merits of AMD's Vega 56 and 64, and I guess you could even argue about the out of stock Radeon 7 if you're that way inclined, but it's really impossible to argue against the fact that Nvidia holds the performance crown. And for those spending over $500, your best choice right now is the RTX 2080 or the ludicrous 2080 Ti. And since this is the best extreme 4K gaming option, we're obviously picking the 2080 Ti here. While it is true they are grossly overpriced at $1,300 US, if you want the best of the best, well, this is quite plainly it. The MSRP of the AIB models is meant to be $1,000, or, well, it is $1,000 US, and even at that price, I feel uh, they're still pretty insane. But no matter how much I complain about it, the pricing's not gonna change, so the situation is what it is. Uh, they're obviously selling in big enough volumes to enable a 30% markup. Personally, I'd snap up an RTX 2080 for $700 US, and then I'd just pocket the change for an upgrade in a year or two. But if you've got money to burn, and obviously Nvidia's counting on a good many of you being in that situation, then there's really no better 4K gaming experience than what you'll receive with the 2080 Ti. Well, there you have it. Nvidia has continued to muscle AMD out of the market with their Turing GPUs. Earlier in the year, if you had $300 US or less to spend, you were buying a Radeon GPU. That was really a no brainer, or at least you should have been buying an AMD GPU. Today though, that price range has dropped down to $200 US or less, leaving the RX 550, the 560 and the 570 as the only worthwhile buys in my opinion or I suppose the RX 580, if you can get one for less than $200. The GTX 1660 Ti has placed a huge amount of pressure on AMD's GPU division. The level of performance it offers for under $300 just makes it one of the best value options out there right now. Then with the 1660 and 1650 rumored to be incoming soon, things are likely to get a lot worse for AMD before they get better. And on that positive note, I'm gonna end this video. If you liked it, feel free to well, you know, hit the thumbs up thing. You can subscribe for more content just like this. And if you appreciate the work we do at Ironbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. You will gain access to our exclusive Discord chat and our monthly live stream with Tim and myself. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.